Number seven could be the title of a Chanel perfume. It's not. Welcome on Laughing Museums, my name is Cedric and yes, I am here right now live at the uh, Picasso Museum in Antibes and I went to see a fantastic private exhibit uh, of uh, David uh, Nawar. I'm gonna say a word about uh, the guy. Just, uh, just a little anecdote about uh, David Nawar. He was there today, this morning. I just learned that from my friend at the security here because he said, uh, you know what, when you're having such a collection, you can't really see it. Uh, the guy who owns 300 Picasso to give you an idea of the size of that player. So he said, I have to come to uh, my own exhibit to actually enjoy my own painting. But today, I was here to talk about uh, number seven. I spent a lot of time in front of that uh, painting. Number seven, Dark Overlight, is a Rothko painting. And I've been looking at it for quite some time. My conclusion after looking at it, I've been coming here for like three, four times, and today I spent almost an hour just looking at that painting uh, of course reading and documenting myself a lot on Mark Rothko uh, lately which is a passion from the year I've been a teenager but I didn't really understand why and I think I get why now because the guy is fascinated with tragedy but in a noble way like Nietzsche I told you if you don't uh, uh, if you want to know about uh, uh, um, you want to know about uh, painting uh, read philosophy you want to know about painting read philosophy you want to enjoy museums, read history. Do not read books on art in a way. It will be too complex and, and, and it will lose you, right? Dark of a light number seven. I'm going to leave some room so I'm going to be able to put painting right here, right? Dark of a light number seven uh, is a fantastic peak, a piece, sorry, by Mark uh, Rothko. Um, just a word on Rothko. Um, arrived from uh, Russia, which is uh, in Letony uh, today, arrived in the US around the age of five. Uh, super dramatic. He arrived with uh, his family. His brother left with his two older brothers. So he was with his mother. Arrived. His father died one year later. He had to cross from New York to Portland, Oregon with a panel, like I have my professional card right there, uh, saying I don't speak English. Imagine how traumatizing that would be. One year later, his father is dying of a cancer and himself will uh, lose his wife and kids in 37 after kind of an ugly uh, separation. Apparently something like jealousy of uh, uh, the fact that his wife was too successful in the jewelry business. Ironic when you know the painting I spent some time in front today worth apparently around 80 million dollars. Another indiscretion from the uh, security. I love Rothko for so, so many reasons. For example, Rothko um, was interesting because uh, he was considered for some time as an abstract, uh, abstract expressionist, but he always refused that. Uh, he never really went to school, apparently he spent like a year learning how to draw and to paint, didn't like it so much. And most important, he said he failed at transcribing the human figure and that to me is fascinating. That's the story of a failure, but he admitted the fact that he failed at uh, transmitting the uh, human uh, uh, figure and I find that quite uh, quite something to admit such a failure. Um, he also refused action painting even though he was close to Pollock, to uh, Barnett Newman, uh, uh, to some others and uh, they were quite sharing the bottles if I understood well the program of these guys right. But he went for another way, he decided to go uh, in a completely uh, something direction of his own. Apparently around the 1940s, right, so in 37, 38, something like this, right, he decided to stop painting for an entire year just to read, right. Um, he was mostly reading, I was telling you, uh, a lot of tragedy, Greek, old tragedy, which is quite something I like to do. Uh, then he was reading a lot of Nietzsche, which was fascinating, with tragedy and the origin of the myth. Uh, do not mistake myth and mythology. They're quite, they're quite different. Uh, the Greeks, and I made a video on that, do not believe in mythology, but they believe in the myth, right? So the origin of man and etc. And he said his goal was to make uh, painting so he can 
uh, help human beings with the burden of having to live such a terrifying life and I find that absolutely amazing right um, and finally yeah he was also reading a little bit of the interpretation of dreams and Sigmund Freud as well right uh, one other thing you need to know on um, that painting dark of a light so there's a uh, um, and I'm gonna try to put it here um, so it's black it's uh, yellow and a circle with red right uh, a lot of people have been talking about uh, Pollock, uh, uh, Pollock as uh, Rothko, sorry, as he was making floating figure, uh, super abstract, super complex. You can read like a ton of literature making absolutely no sense to me. I, I agree that people write on this kind of thing and make it very, very complex. I don't think it's really helping to look at the painting. I think it's really interesting for artistry per se. But when you go into the exhibit, you look at it, it's not really helping at least it's not really helping me what interests me is like what the guy I've been reading and and uh, another guy Philippe Solers wrote something interesting in Art Press a magazine I had the luck to write into Art Press magazine and he wrote something about the fact that he changed his name uh, uh, from Marcus Rostovitz to uh, Mark Rothko uh, he became American in uh, 1938 as well and uh, um, and he said changing his name is like something Abraham when God told Abraham that he will become Abraham, huh? uh, uh, Jacob to become Israel, etc. So even though he rejected the Jewish tradition, it was really, really super, super intense present. Even though he said one day in an interview I read to a journalist that his father was a social democrat and that this whole religious present was like kind of bullshit. I think he was really pissed by that. But you can tell he was definitely, definitely present, that's for sure, right? Uh, he was speaking Hebrew, Yiddish, Russian, uh, 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 and obviously uh, English at some point. Um, so yeah, uh, back to the painting per se, right? So uh, black, yellow, circle was red, and then you have like the kind of the tension of the canvas. And I was thinking as I was looking at it, the tension of the canvas is like, like a like Greek stage, you know? On the Greek stage, you got everything happening on stage, okay? Everything happening on stage, but there is also what is not happening on stage, which is the unconscious of human beings, right? And I think the, 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 the plays, I was about to say the plays of Roscoe, but his paintings are like plays, 839 paintings, something like this he made in, a, in a 20 years or so. Uh, it's, it's like a Greek stage, so there is what you see, there is what you don't see, but you're supposed to know, and there is eventually what, where it's supposed to lead us, right? Which was the goal of Rothko to lead us somewhere. When you say, when journalists used to tell him it's a religious direction or something, he was really pissed with that. But I think it's like, like, like when people who don't like to talk about religion, you can talk about godliness or a feeling of something. I'm very comfortable with it. I understand some people are not, and that's totally cool. That is totally cool, right? Now, one, one point about the colors, and this painting in particular, because I'm just making that video after looking at it for quite some time, right? Um, that the, the black, I realize the red. Oh yeah, somebody wrote that the red in, in, in Hebrew is uh, Adama, uh, the earth, right? and Adam the blood okay um, this red I was looking at right now it was like more like a, a, a pink red kind of a funny red kind of a uh, uh, you know those puffy things you heat it like at, at, a, at a parade a festival or something like a candy yeah like candy kind of a, a candy pink or something right and uh, the yellow is really like um, like a little uh, little poussin I'm gonna write that in, in, in English Poussin because I forgot the name. I'm gonna put a Poussin actually here so you see what I'm talking about because the name is dropping right now and uh, that kind of yellow and finally even the black I realized after again looking at the painting staring at it for almost an hour I realized even the black is uh, for some reason kind of a festive and then I read somewhere uh, because you know we found some new writings of uh, Rothko about 20 30 years ago so about 20 years after he passed and uh, 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 they say suicide but it's not completely clear it might have been killed or whatever so both theories like like for van gogh and um and and even the dark the the, the black at one point at the end i realized after one hour you know what this black he's not aggressive at all it's not he's not tragic and rothko used to say 
uh, I think tragedy is, is something that is um, putting you in a good mood or something that is supposed to like you know put, put some life in you and that's exactly what the Greek were making tragedy for especially Achilles that he used to read a lot tragedy was a body the entire uh, 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 Greek village city was here to enjoy days and days of tragedy like the festival d'Avignon nowadays right so it was really something joyful and for some reason I find the work of Rothko after looking at it and studying for some time very joyful number seven dark of uh, uh, light is not a Chanel a perfume when you think about it it could have been a Chanel uh, a perfume you guys take care no matter what you do don't forget if you're not doing it with a smile well you're doing it wrong